and uh, uh, very, and that very big, become special. Mm -hmm. You become member of academy, mm -hmm. and uh, you, 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 you measure it in Tesla. And Tesla. <laughs> to combine the two. So I'll give floor to uh, academician Zora uh, Kevokapic, uh, who is going to introduce uh, our laureate, Koegimisi uh, Kolege. Ja ću imam tu čas sada da upravo dam reč profesoru akademiku Kivokapiću, koji će predstaviti profesor Nemoš Kovic. Professor Lavis, thank you very much. I put slides on, on in English because of our colleagues and uh, our rule is to present and uh, our visiting professor on our Serbian language. Ja ću nekoliko reći, uh, reći o profesoru Nebojši Popoviću. Zaista u našoj sredini uh, nema puno ljudi koji njega ne znaju. Ne samo kao izvarednog hiruga, već i kao izvrednog sportistu koji je godina uveseljava u naše domove. Profesor Nebojša Popović trenutno radi u Kataru i on je medicinski direktor. Inače, svi vi znate da je vrstan ortoped, također je profesor i urednik je sportskog medicinskog žurnala u Asteta. Kao što vidite, on je diplomirao 1974. godine u Beogradu, specializaciju ortovetske hirurgije je završio na Vanjici, također u Beogradu, magisterijum 82. i doktorirao je 1984. godine. Možete zamisliti kakva briljantna i naučna, ali i sportska karijera. A posebnu draž i njegovu veličinu čini to što je on napustio našu zemlju, verovatno je tada morao, i ponovno sve završio. 1994. položio neke diferencijalne ispite, 1997. završio specializaciju ortopedske hirurgije i 2002. odbranio drugi doktorat sada u Liježu. Kao što vidite, on je radio u mnogim ustanovama, počeo je u Banju Luci i on je jako ponosan na taj svoj početak u Univerzitetskoj bolnici u Banju Luci. Zatim je radio u St. Louis Paris bolnici, radio je u Dumeri Paris bolnici i na kraju dugo je radio više 17 godina u ortopedskoj klinici univerziteta u Liježu. Sada je, rekao sam, ortoped i profesor u Kataru. Što se tiče akademijske pozicije, vi vidite da je on sve od početka završio, asistent profesor, docent, profesor i u Beogradu, i u Banja Luci, i na kraju u Kataru, naravno i u Liježu 2002. godine. Što se tiče publikacija, vrlo je bio produktivan. Vidite da je publikovo više od 60 radova u najpoznatijim časopisima preteženog iz ortopedije. Napisao je tri knjige, uglavnom također iz ortopedije i izuzetno je aktivan poslednjih nekoliko godina u edukaciji mladih ljudi u Kataru, a također, kao što sam rekao, i vodi jedan fantastičan žurnal, imat ćete prilike svi da ga sutra dobijete ako dođete na naš sastanak. I dolaze do onog možda najvažnije, možda za mene što sam sportista, profesor Popović je 1972. godine je dobio zlatnu medalju ovoj jugoslovenski tim rukometa, dobio je zlatnu medalju. Pored toga, pogledajte jedan spisak svih medalja i prvenstava koje je on osvojio tokom svoje bogate karijere. Bio je jedan od najboljih 
rukometaša na svetu, a to pokazuje i ova činjenica da je dva puta bio u svetskoj selekciji rukometaša i tada je dao nekoliko golova, ja mislim šest na utakmicama protiv kombinovanih selekcija. Pored toga, jako je ponosan na svoj početak na Banja Luku i Borac, 1976. godine su osvojili Evropski kup u Rukometu. I pre nego što dam ponovo reč profesoru Popoveću, ja sam želeo nekoliko detalja i da izrazim svoje personalno zapažanje o profesoru Popoveću, koga ja ne znam dugo, osim sa televizijskih ekrana, ali imam se prilike da ga dobro upoznam i zaista ću vam izneti nešto što iskreno osjeća. Pored nesumljive stručnosti i velikog pedagoškog i naučnog iskustva, profesor Popović je veliki humanista, posebno patriota. Iako je više od dve decenije van naše zemlje, on koristi svaku priliku da pomogne kako pojedincima, tako i institucijama u Srbiji. Naročiti je veliki njegov doprinos u sportu i sportskoj medicini. Njegova poslednja inicijativa da organizujemo ovaj sastanak u Beogradu po prvi put zajedno s Institutom za sport i sportsku medicinu u Beogradu je vrhunac njegove želje da pomogne u afirmaciji naše zemlje i prosperitetu sportske medicine kao važne discipline u medicini. Ja pozivam profesora Popovića da kaže svoje predavanje, a posle profesor Valić da nabavim da nastavi sa profesorom. People are going to think that I only all my life play handball. I'm a little bit also medicine. <laughs> but what I would like to talk today, I would like to talk about uh, Serbian sports medicine history. And on the way that my friends who are coming from Aspeta around the world, that they can understand. Because we had proud history in sports medicine. To understand the history of uh, sports medicine, modern sports medicine in Serbia, you have to understand a little bit history, because in 19th century, here in uh, that was turbulent period, lots of war, that, uh, and finally in uh, eight, uh, 1878, uh, there was this uh, <coughs> treaty of Berlin, when the Serbia obtained her independence and finally there was a border. And only a few years after was a declaration of Kingdom of Serbia in 1882. Why all that is important? You can see that was Europe at the end of 19th century. There was this big Ottoman Empire who starts to go down and all these small country like Serbia have to fight for their independence. And there was not so many uh, country in Europe comparing to, uh, with, uh, today uh, with we are more than 50 countries. What is important in the 19th century, once when Serbia obtained her independence, Lots of young people, intellectual, who did the study around the European capital, come back home. Coming back home, they bring ideas of physical exercise to protect the health of the nation. And they was these people who push physical exercise. And what happened? In 19th century, in Eastern Europe, you had most important things, you have sport, you have also medicine, but development was parallel. You needed something to connect, to connect them. And that is start sport association. That was needed once the start sport association you had in 19th century sports medicine. 
this part of this part of Europe was under a little bit German influence, but in uh, uh, in uh, Serbia there, this, there was this movement who came from Czechoslovakia. They call it movement of uh, physical gymnastic soko. What that means soko? The soko means uh, falco. Who that was established in Prague by Miroslav Tirsch, that was movement of gymnastic but also with the political freedom who spread around and in the beginning in 60, 80, 62 you had about 2,000 people between two world war there was two million who was participated in this movement of gymnastics. What about people here? We can talk about Vladan Djordjevic. He was a, a surgeon. He was uh, he did his study in Vienna, and he also was promoting because, because lots of these doctors was promoting exercise, and he was the first president of Belgrade Association for Gymnastic and Fighting. What about between two world wars? In 30 group of doctors started up an organization of healthy control of athletes and hygienic control of sports facilities of Belgrade. That is the beginning of modern sports medicine. 36 professor, as you have, Vojslav Arnojevic, started first OPD uh, clinic for the athletes. And there was a guy that we call uh, uh, Dr. Roy, uh, Roy Smodlaka. By the decision of Serbian government, he was sent in Berlin to do specialization in sports medicine. And what happened when he came back home in 40 starts Sports medicine was introduced as an optional course at the Faculty of Medicine in Belgrade. And you see this uh, edition, Sports Kakniga, is a tradition in Serbia. And he published also their his books. In 52, Institute for Sports Medicine was founded and 66 first specialist in sports medicine in Serbia was uh, formed uh, Dr. Miodrag Petrovic. Another thing that we are proud of in Serbia, that's the uh, Serbian Institute of Sport and Sports Medicine. Why we are proud? Because that's, uh, you have 40 hectares of fantastic facility for the sports and all national team spend their for their preparation, in the same time doing screening in Institute of Sports. And me also, I spent weeks and weeks in the training in Institute of Sports. And they collected the data. You have all these big champions, there, the data are there. And in the 60s, orthopedic surgeons start to be part of the Association of Sports Medicine. A famous doctor in 67 was Dr. Bram Salmeshur. He was the guy who had done first surgical, he surgically he tried to find a solution of growing brain trauma. And in 87, he had 300, 671 football players operating. That huge experience. And this operation that he did, Dr. Martens know very well, is plastic tegmenti, tegmentis abdominis et canalis immunalis secundum bacini for modification of nations. For that reason, me with my team last year, that was for, uh, 20 years that he died, we find this famous paper that he published in Serbia, Serbia we translate it in English and we give it to Anglo-Saxon to see that he was the first one who started the surgical part uh, in treatment of brain pain. What about me? Did I contribute something?
for this uh, development of modern sports medicine in Serbia. You see, a few years ago, I celebrated with my friend, uh, Professor Martens, 32 or 33 years that I started to do arthroscopy. I was the first to uh, start arthroscopic surgery in former Yugoslavia, and I established first workshop uh, for lots of doctors in former Yugoslavia about surgery. As all young, ambitious doctor, I have done my PhD, I defined my PhD in Belgium, and uh, I was writing in these early years about rotatory instability, and I have provided a measure of laxity for the first time in the literature, measure of the laxity in such a plane of normal knee. We didn't know before that with the stress machine. As well, in the Serbian tradition, like Professor Smodlak, I published the book about uh, sport injury in handball, 150 page, and that is part of our tradition. Once again, in addition, Sportska Kniga. After, for other reasons, I had to do another PhD that I defined in, uh, in uh, Belgium, and I talk about overuse injury of elbow in handball players. And uh, in my book, I talk for the first time about hyperextension injury of the elbow that was never described before in handball world keepers. And that was a little bit topic because that's typically for the technique of uh, Handball goal creepers, ball kick him uh, in the forearm. And what, uh, as you see, the, this impact is enormous. Say, that's 130 kilometers per hour with the ball of nearly 500 grams. According, we have done a big study about nearly 1,000 goal keepers. And according to our study, almost all goal keepers sustain their elbow injury for that, after that direct impact. After that, we ask ourselves a question, uh, can we mimic uh, the clinical injury mechanism on the cadaveric study and uh, with the same impact loads? And that was possible. And that is a little bit how we did it for my thesis. And you see here, that's a mathematic uh, impact of uh, uh, there was this 170 kilometers uh, per hour. He had to throw it from three meters of height. And uh, after we analyze all this uh, cadaveric uh, elbow, and we find all the time the same type of injury: L-shaped rupture of pronator flexor origin, complete rupture of anterior capsule, elongation of anterior bundle of medial collateral ligament, a sometimes occasional lesion of cartilage. To confirm it, we have done also a study on uh, radiologic ultrasound and MRI in 30 goalkeepers with a uh, career at least 15 years. And we find very interesting lesion Elbow effusion in 66% of goalkeepers, and they was before they tell that they are asymptomatic before investigation. We find loose body in 33% of cases, and we can observe that there was no difference between dominant and non-dominant elbow. And uh, on the base of this study, my first. Uh, publication my book in 85 that, that I call on the base of my, my friend <laughs> goalkeepers, they say uh, all we are suffering from anterior level of pain and ball kick us, I could confirm it that but, uh, that part of mechanics of hypertrophic trauma similar to handball goalkeepers confirm typical lesion on the base of the findings in imaging study, we confirmed overuse of the elbow in these atlas, 
that they are responsible for the pathological changes. And on the day of these findings, the existence of specific injury patterns can be confirmed in head goalkeeper. From 2007, I worked in Aspeta, and uh, I'm enjoying the, maybe the best part of my professional career, because I'm working really in sports medicine environment in the clinic who have multidisciplinary approach for sports medicine. We have fantastic people in physiotherapy, fantastic surgeon, sport and exercise medicine expert, sports science expert, and that is really fantastic environment to work. I, with the, my managing editor, who is who I came from New Zealand, Velvet uh, Garvey, to be here. We established this Aspetar Sports Medicine Journal. And we are very proud. We are growing very fast. And for this time, we have 10,000 hard copy. And uh, that's well accepted. <coughs> what about Serbia? There was slowdown in sports medicine after this fast progression, especially in 90. There was economic problems and there was also more, uh, 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 aggression on uh, Serbia in 99. But why I'm optimistic? Because first part, as I told you before, sport, people like sports in Serbia. A sport recover very fast, as you see. Second thing, there is lots of young people who like medicine. And still, there is Institute of Sports of Medicine. For that reason, in 2030, we signed the agreement with them because we would like to be partners. Now, with the new director, who is heading Boyan Yu, thank you very much. We are doing our first Congress International with all these big experts. And tomorrow starts one of the best Congress organized this year in Europe. And you are going to tell me I'm optimistic for their future. Can I utilize this lecture? Because I'm in Belgrade to be very grateful to my professor in Faculty of Medicine in Belgrade. And I'm especially glad that Professor Kanyuk, who is here, he was my professor of pathology. Why I'm grateful to my professor? Because they share their knowledge with us, but they learn us three things love to medicine, second thing, to respect our patient, and third thing, you can reach everything if you are ready to work very hard. As at the end of my professional career, I have traveled a lot around the world. I meet lots of excellent <coughs> doctors. I share my knowledge with them, and they share their knowledge with me, and I learned from them. But in the, my professional life, if as a sports medicine doctor or orthopedic surgeon, if there was one person who I would like to be especially grateful, that is my professor Cvet Korakic. He was orthopedic pediatric surgeon, but he was brilliant sports medicine doctor. He had enormous culture, and in the early 80s, he shared with me knowledge about overuse injury in athletes. And he was all the time behind me. There is here. He was all the time behind me. For that reason, I would like to do 
to read to you that people like you, like him, they don't have name of street, like, nor hospital, school, or boulevards. People like him stay in the hearts of those who knew them. Great man. Thank you very much. finish our session, but not fi finish our activities this evening. Uh, thank you very much for all speakers. I hope you enjoy all lectures. If yes, then we have a Thank you very much for all who come and show us that we have great doctors in, in Serbia. Now it's short uh, rest and we are going to have opening ceremony and uh, I think seven, seven o'clock in National Theatre. Thank you very much for coming and uh, have a nice day.